Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Daryl Steinberg. I'm the mayor of Sacramento. Um, I am joined today by Steve Waters from First Step Communities. Welcome to you, Steve, and thank you for all of your heroic work. Also joined by Bob Chase and John Hoxton, the uh, lead architects in our city, uh, representing both the Urban Land Institute and the American uh, Institute of Architects. And they're here for a very important reason. As we unveil this master siting plan, which I'm going to describe in a moment, we want the public to know that we intend to build safe communities for our homeless population that are of quality, that safe ground, that safe camping doesn't have to just mean REI tents and and the kind of tent encampments that we're used to seeing around town, but that we can actually build the kinds of uh, small housing villages, tiny home villages that will not only help people, but make our communities proud. But that's for a few minutes from now. This is a press availability, less of kind of a formal press conference. I hope we can make this kind of informal, but I do want to um, take a few minutes to describe to you what we're doing. And um, there's so many major thank yous um, that uh, I wanna make, but especially to two of my staff members who worked really, really hard on this, Julia Burroughs and Mary Lynn Belinka. Thank you, um, Julia, especially just has been heroic in her efforts to help me and help the city get to this point. Here is the history and what brings us here today. During my first term in office, when the city was not, was just getting into the business of being a, a major leader on addressing the homeless crisis, we had very little money and we didn't have much shelter beyond what we did collaboratively with our county. When I became mayor four and a half years ago, the problem was obviously getting worse. I have a long history, as you know, um, as the author of California's Mental Health Services Act and as someone who's been involved in these issues for a long, long time. But I also knew instinctively, substantively, humanely, and politically that the city had to be aggressive in trying to make a difference. And during my first term, we stood up for the first time some new congregate shelters. We brought more money into the city than ever before from state and federal resources. And we began making, addressing this problem a core priority. And along the way, I think it is important to note that between the city and the county, over the last four and a half years, we've gotten over 13,000 people from a state of un being unsheltered to being permanently housed. And yet, as we know, when it comes to what people feel and see and what homeless people are experiencing, the problem in many ways has gotten worse. Affordable housing, COVID, the fact that people and society is just so much more fragile now for everybody, for everybody, but especially for people who are having a tough time economically or family-wise or dealing with mental health or substance abuse issues, the problem has gotten worse. So I had my own epiphany some months ago as I was beginning, about to begin my second term, and it was this. We can no longer approve one side at a time. For if we just approve one side at a time, we're going to spend months negotiating, sometimes arguing with the particular community, and we are going to take one big step forward, but too many steps backwards. I reflected back to my time as a young city council member in the 1990s when the Congress perfected this base closure process where they took one vote, up or down vote, to decide nationally which bases should be closed and which shouldn't be closed because they could not do it one at a time. And it actually worked and saved the federal budget and uh, the defense budget. Uh, billions of dollars. 
I thought, why can't we do something similar when it comes to the citing question with homelessness? In January, I asked my colleagues to commit to a master citing plan for Sacramento. And the idea was, and the idea remains as follows. The council has shown great leadership, all of my colleagues in, in going out to their community, holding meetings, identifying sites, and bringing forward those sites so that we could compile them citywide, put them in a single report, in a single plan, in a single resolution, take one vote, and that one vote will be next Tuesday, August the 10th. Once that vote is taken, all of the sites in the plan will be deemed approved. My intent is to say that after the 10th of August and the approval of this master siting plan, that neither the city management nor anybody responsible for the implementation of this plan has to come back to the city council for any other approvals. Should all be about implementation. So what are we presenting here today after that, after that maybe too lengthy introduction? The plan we bring forward next Tuesday contains 20, includes 20 sites in tier one, 15 of them publicly owned or controlled sites. We add those 20 new sites to the existing new facilities that um, are still, some which are still in construction like the WX Sprung Shelter. We are going to create annual capacity with just the new site, with just the new site for 3, 000, over 3,600 people. When we add the existing new facilities like the WX Shelter, we will add another thousand plus people that we will be able to help. Bottom line, because I want to get you to the bottom line. When we take the 20 sites, we add them to the new facilities that have already been approved that we are either creating or have just been created. When we add a placeholder for a large campus, and while I'm not able to report to you with specificity, a location and a site at this point, I will tell you we are making great progress in identifying a potential site for a large campus facility in collaboration, by the way, with our county partners. When we add prior, these 20 priority sorts, existing new facilities, a large campus, a commitment to six motel conversions within the city, in addition, using our motel voucher program, our housing voucher program at a scattered site approach. We believe that we can intervene with 9,820 people in a single year. That means helping almost 10,000 people end, begin ending their state of homelessness. If we implement this plan with the same urgency, with the same, with the same passion, with the same fidelity that has gone into my colleagues and the community and my team developing this plan and bringing it forward for a vote next Tuesday. I'm glad to talk to answer your questions in any detail about the various elements, but just to explain once again, there are really two main parts of this. One is a siting plan where we identify 20 new sites 15 of them which are publicly owned, which will allow us to construct safe ground, tiny home villages, congregate shelter, even permanent supportive housing on these sites, because we will either control the sites or we already have agreements with the private property owners to go forward with a specific project. In addition to those new sites, we have a number of projects that have already been approved. 
that we are moving forward with it, like the WX shelter. Third, we are committed with our county partners to create the space for a large campus for people who are the most chronically homeless, who are dealing with the most significant mental health and or substance abuse issues. In addition, we are going to be aggressive, especially with the state funding under Project Home Key to seek to convert at least six new motels, if not more, so that we can use the motel conversion strategy as a key part of bringing people indoors. And by the way, the advantage to Project Home Key is that we will own the assets and the motels for the long term. That gets us with the, the program assumes that for all the temporary sites, we're gonna be able to move people through on an average every six months. Now that's an average because some people, once we get them into safe ground into a tiny home village in a temporary shelter or housing, we'll be able to reconnect and reunite with family or friends and end their homelessness quickly. For others we know, it will be much more difficult but we assume an average of a flow through every six months to get to our 9,800 plus number. If you assume no flow, that everybody stays in the temporary, the, the, the temporary shelters and the temporary safe grounds and never leave, we still are able to accommodate over 5,300 people. How are we gonna pay for this? One of the appendixes to the report shows how as a city, I, and I will propose that we get to a new investment of $100 million, $100 million, and we can do it. Between our American Relief Plan Act dollars, our new state dollars through so-called HAP3, through some of the uh, other available federal funds, we can get to $100 million. And I will not presume to, I do not speak in any way for the county. I will tell you that I am more encouraged than ever about our conversations together, about our relationship and about our partnership. And we are meeting regularly to talk about how we can actually, how we can partner in very specific ways to not only maximize our resources, but to play to our strengths. We'll operate, we'll fund most of these sites. We obviously, we obviously don't do mental health and or substance abuse. And it's where we need that partnership with the county. The report also includes mandatory good neighbor requirements. And this is again where Bob and John and Steve Waters are going to talk to you uh, in, in just a moment about good neighbor policy start with the quality of the projects, but aren't limited just to the quality of the projects. Every project and every provider and operator is going to sign a good neighbor policy so that there is a, a requirement that the facilities that we build, the sites that we activate are a net benefit to the neighborhood. Not a, not a negative. And for those, and I know they're out there saying, well, please do this, but don't put this anywhere near I live or where my business is. Doing nothing is not an alternative. It's not an alternative. Because if we don't do what I am putting forward here, then we are left with, the status quo with what people see every day under the freeway, what they see spreading throughout our city. It's not a unique Sacramento problem. It's a state and national problem. But I've said it before and, I'm, and I still believe it. We have an opportunity to show, not that we can cure the problem because nobody's promising a cure, but that we can make it better that we can show people a tangible and visible difference while we help thousands of people along the way. Let me turn it over. Um, 
again with John and the Bob for a few minutes to show you our concept of what safe ground could look like in Sacramento so that people begin seeing we're not talking about squalid tent encampments. We want people to have a path out of homelessness, to live safer, to live with, to live in a more healthy way and to live with dignity. And I'm grateful to the and First Step Communities for helping to show us the way.